uh, so heating this up back in the day when we didn't have distillates and the refined process of the biomass, um, we would break this up, put it in the oven at about 200 degrees, let it uh, bake for maybe, you know, 15 minutes or so, take it out. And then all of that THCA is now THC. And then oh, you use it. okay. Yeah. So then you then you heat up oils or butters um, uh, and you you soak this in it. Yeah. Um, and that's where you get your 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 THC from. The, the basic story is, is that um, I grew up in a very religious household. In fact, my, my parents divorced because my mother came home one day and said, you know, we can't celebrate Christmas, no more birthdays. You have to quit smoking, drinking. I'm a Jehovah Witness. Right. My father, um, who at age 21 lost his legs, a testicle and a lung at the Chosin Reservoir Battle in Korea on November 28, 1950, he got hit, um, laid there for nine hours. His limbs froze, which saved his life, uh, stopped the blood flow. They told him he'd never father children, walk or, or work, you know, back then. And of course, he was shipped out to Oakland Naval Hospital here in Oakland. Um, my mom walked in the hospital to visit a friend. They fell in love and they started their life. So my dad did all those things and more, of course. But when it came time, you know, my mom to say, hey, we're going to stop all this. He goes, no, we're not. And um, so they divorced. And one of the things that, you know, since I was raised in early age in this religion, which was extremely fanatic about, you know, the devil is in cannabis and weed and, you know, everything. Sure. Um, so my brother had come back. He, he was in the army during the Vietnam War. He had come back and he was growing weed at his house. And I asked him, I said, you know, why are you doing that? And, um, I remember him saying something about sleeping, right? Uh, I was 13, 14 at that time, maybe. And then uh, went out on my dad's deck one day and he was with his, some of his buddies that were visiting and they were smoking a joint. Literally the only time I saw my father smoke cannabis. Um, I said, Hey pops, what are you doing? And he, you know, why, why are you doing that? And he says, well, my feet hurt. And I, I laughed and I said, pops, you don't have any feet, you know? And he goes, <laughs> yeah. And if you let that sit in, if you let that resonate with yourself for a minute, then you realize, you know, um, which I didn't back then, but did in my, you know, years to come that, that cannabis is an extremely powerful, natural uh, um, component. And, um, I started studying, uh, I, I actually didn't start using cannabis till I was in my late thirties. Um, yet I've grown it, um, methodically, uh, you know, literally writing down everything that I've fed it, the fertilizers that I've, I've mixed together to, to feed it, feeding it on full moons and super full moons when the gravitational pool has more uh, effect on our plants, which it does all the time. Um, so, you know, that's what kind of like anything that I am passionate about, I dive into it and I can, I, I, I tear it apart, rebuild it. I want to understand as much as I can. And I probably know about that much about cannabis, uh, which is, um, probably a million times more than most people know, Right. <laughs> but I right. haven't even scratched the surface. Sure. It's a big um, subject. Yeah. So, you know, as the, as legal legalization started and things like that, I, as I'm getting a little bit older um, and not, you know, uh, not able or want to, you know, stand on a on line all day and cook at night, things like that. I, there was a time in years and decades where I loved that. Um, I started to take some of my award-winning sauces, which I was very, very grateful for being able to have as many awards as I've, I've had and uh, infusing them. So I started with the um, caramel sauce, uh, which actually won um, first place in the weed con um, competition that I didn't even know one of my dispensaries yep. entered it in, uh, which was huge because, you know, every once in a while you start thinking, okay, well, you know, did I get lucky on some of this stuff or was it yeah. really because I'm talented and, and um, I'll always uh, defer to luck. Um, 
but uh, it was it was a confirmation. First year out, uh, literally six months in dispensaries, and I get the best new confection of the year at a, a, a contest that is um, for dispensary owners, uh, salespeople, and bud tenders. So that was cool. Um, again, dark chocolate. And then uh, my sweet and spicy barbecue sauce, which I've basically blended the Carolina um, uh, vinegar style, thinner style sauce with a thicker uh, okay. Midwest sauce. So, okay. Let, hang on, Glenn. Let's pull back the onion here. With okay. these sauces, is it flavor? Is it effect? Is it, I mean, are, are you getting high by doing, by having the sauce? Is it? Ab is it absolutely. A yeah. Yeah. Depending on which, what we're infusing it with. So THC okay. distillate and, and CBD distillate are the, the, the two prominent cannabinoids that are in cannabis and hemp. Right. Um, and uh, for me, it's always all about flavor. If the sauce isn't great, then I'm not going to eat it. Yep. Um, if I want to get high, I can certainly smoke a bowl or, um, you know, I, I can take some of the pure distillate I have and melt it in some butter. Right. Yep. yep. Um, so, yes, the effect is important. Um, quality is important of ingredients. We have everything tested uh, to make sure there's no heavy metals, make sure there's no pesticides, things like that. That's law. So we, we follow the law. Um, but it is, it's always about flavor. And what's happening in cannabis and especially in CBD um, is that uh, the benefits are so overwhelmingly positive um, that, that um, you know, they're actually in, in legal states, they're watching the uh, opioid um, uh, prescriptions go down because people are using cannabis now because they yes. can. Okay. Um, so from a PTSD standpoint, no matter where your PTSD came from, whether it was service in the military, which I thank everyone for always, or, uh, you know, the trauma that you grew up with on the, the tough streets of, of, of New Jersey or New York or wherever you were, right? Right. Um, so that's, you know, there, there's, there's a passionate side of it. There's a business side of it that it, mm -hmm. it's, it's a very lucrative business if you're doing it right. Um, but you know, I'm not a gazillionaire, Albert. Um, uh, I've made, uh, I've made a good living. I've made a lot of mistakes. I, I've made a lot of, I've had a lot of triumphs and, and, um, it feels good to help other people as well. So okay. that's, that's basically the, yeah, message. that's fantastic. So is this, let's just talk, let's talk about the sauce. Is that it's infused with cannabis. Do you use it for pizza? Let's go to the pizza direction. Well, you want, I, I'm going to tell you, it's, it's really funny. Because there's one guy, and I know he won't, he won't mind that I mention his name. There's one guy in our industry that I would have never thought would call me and say, hey, Glenn, I'm wondering, when are we going to be able to get those sauces with CBD in it? Yeah. Now, you, you, you don't do this, right? Um, and yet, because one of the most tremendous assets that we have in our Absolutely. community no albert i mean no. he always has been he's an amazing guy he's he's given so much back to his community of course yeah, yeah. the generosity and the compassion uh that 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 he shows to all of us is amazing but you know when someone like that calls me and says hey listen you know he goes i have people asking for it um uh in my stores um i get that from a lot of other chefs that i know people we know um and you know, that's that's one of the things I think that that, you know, we're focusing more on CBD infused now than we are THC. Infused, OK, as a matter of fact, simply you know, because you the know, market is just just break huge. it down. I mean, uh, I, I'll admit my ignorance to CBD. I know they're both they're both in uh, they're both chemicals in marijuana. So CBT and. And what THC. And THC, of course, So THC is your psychoactive cannabinoid. So that's the one right. that gets you high. CBD yep. is not psychoactive at all. Yep. In fact, it has less than 3% THC, which means that you'd have to drink gallons of it before you even remotely got high. Right. Um, and our body is, you know, and our Jewish, our Jewish scientists in Israel, um, our Israeli scientists, I should rather say, um, have been studying cannabis for 50 plus years. They're, 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 they're way ahead of us. 
our body naturally has cannabinoid receptors in it. So if you think Tylenol, boy, my elbow hurts, I'm going to take some Tylenol. Well, how does that Tylenol know where to get to your elbow and ease that pain? Same premise with cannabinoids. Cannabinoid, we actually have things in our body that are called cannabinoid receptors because cannabinoids are found in a lot of different plants, right? Sure. Um, uh, THC, hemp, and, and CBD, uh, um, cannabis cannabinoids are completely different. So um, when, the, when, when CBD, when people get high um, and they get the munchies, they go, oh, I'm high, I got the munchies. What they don't realize is that's actually CBD. That's what the CBD does. So from an inflation, uh, inflammatory uh, issue from um, people that are suffering cancer and or don't have an appetite, um, the, the wealth of properties that, that, that CBD provides people for pain relief, swelling and things like that. And I'm not making, I'm not making any medical claims here, but sure. the scientists have proven it and we have to catch up in the U S what the nation knows is that CBD helps them. It relaxes them, allows them to sleep, gives them an appetite when they need it, um, and makes them feel calm. So all of those properties and many, many, many more, all of those properties are the most, uh, um, you know, significant. So it's not about getting high. Uh, it really isn't. It's about how taking a natural product, um, that benefits you in a lot of different ways. Uh, and, and we really are just focusing right now right. on CBD. Yeah. Right. Right. So tell me how, tell me how you got started in pizza and how that tuned into the CBD uh, industry? Well, you know, the pizza part's really, really easy. Um, so, you know, again, my, my mother and father never remarried, either one of them, until the day they both passed away. They yep. said that was the love of my life, but we couldn't live together. So my dad, with uh, two, uh, you know, prosthetic legs, would pack us kids up every weekend, and we'd go camping up the North Coast here in NorCal, or we'd go up to a place called Bucks Lake and for our vacations and things like that. And, you know, at a very early age, Saturday night was our pizza night. Yeah. And, and we'd get to drink Coca-Cola and, and eat pepperoni pizza from Shakey's Pizza in San Rafael. Remember Shakey's, Cre- yep. And, and watch Creature Features. Sure, sure. So that's the beginning of my pizza. Um, I, you know, in, in, uh, 88 or 89, I met some guys in Hawaii. My cousin and I, Clint, uh, met some guys that were from Italy. Uh, we became close friends in a day, hung out on, uh, the North shore end in, um, uh, Honolulu with these guys. And then we both traveled over to Italy to see them the next summer. And that basically just opened up my whole culinary um, uh, you know, spark, not that I didn't have it before, because one of the things, again, going back to my dad and giving us pizza on Saturday nights was a big deal, but my dad always cooked. He loved to cook. It wasn't his profession. He just loved to do it. Sure. And any one of our friends, anytime, anywhere could come in and he would feed them. And that was just his, that's the way he operated. So yeah. he really instilled the joy and, and love for me in feeding people. And that's basically how my career started. I've been in culinary. I've had a couple few other gigs, but um, the first job I had was at Zim's washing dishes when I was uh, sure. in high school. Sure, sure. So you went to Italy. Is that where you learned how to make pizza? You, or that just got the spark going? No, that just really got the spark going. I, I had right. learned how to make pizza before, but, you know, hanging out in Frigene, uh, right outside of Rome, um, you know, the Sonia del Mare was, a, a, you know, the Zardetto family's uh, beach restaurant yes. and disco back then. Okay, we're going back. Um, and uh, so we hung out and, 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 you know, we traveled through Europe. Uh, and, and had a ball and, and of course have been back and forth and back and forth so many times. Um, but that's really where the love of it came from. Yeah. 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 So what, uh, tell me about what you're doing with pizza right now. So it's, you know, it's interesting because with COVID, of course, everything, the disruption that, that happened, I, um, the last brand persona, uh, was sold in 2018, I believe. Um, 
Carl Chang from Pyology asked me to come down and spend six months with them to help them with their culinary yep. ideation, which I did. Carl's a, a great guy, a phenomenal businessman. Um, and uh, that was a very, very good experience. Then I went six months with Stoner's Pizza Group, um, where I was uh, traveling back east to help them um, fix their brand. Um, and then I, I decided I'm going to go full time. I, with, with my culinary cannabis. So in 2019, um, uh, a good friend of mine from a, an extremely successful pizza family, Mark Stolfi of Connie's pizza in Chicago, um, said, Hey, I want to get involved with this cannabis thing with you. So, um, I brought him into the company, which was great. Mark handled all the finances and, and capital raise for the first round. Um, and I had, I've been ideating and, and infusing for years, decades, yep. um, actually decarboxylating the flour, which means heating that, that flour up. Hang on a second. All right. I like the visuals. There you go. Uh, so, you know, this whole cannabis, if, if I take this bud right here, um, Yep. And I okay. ate it. Hold it up okay. there. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. If I ate, if I ate it, nothing would happen. I wouldn't get stoned. I wouldn't do anything. Decarboxylation is the heating of a product. So that's why people smoke this because smoking it turns the THCA into THC. So it activates the psychoactive uh, aspects of THC. And that's what, um, uh, so heating this up back in the day when we didn't have distillates and the refined process of the biomass, um, we would break this up, put it in the oven at about 200 degrees, let it uh, bake for maybe, you know, 15 minutes or so, take it out. And then all of that THCA is now THC. And then- Ah, oh, okay. Yeah. So then you, then you heat up oils or butters um, uh, and you, you soak this in it. Yeah. Um, and that's where you get your, your, your THC from. So it's, it's, it's been, you know, there's a lot to learn. Um, like in any recipe, whether it has cannabis in it or not, one of the things I teach is, is that cannabis is a, is an ingredient. So launch the company, unfortunately, um, February 28th, Mark Stolfi went to bed and the next day he didn't wake up. He passed away. Massive heart attack, age 55. Um, when COVID hit the next day in March of 2020, and I was derailed from the manufacturing, finally at the end of the year, got the manufacturing done um, and have reformulated the business plan. And right now what I'm doing is um, I'm raising the capital for our new culinary center. Okay. Our cul culinary center is going to be in Northern California, up here in Santa Rosa. We're going to have three kitchens. One's going to be a teaching kitchen. One's going to be a, um, uh, an immersive teaching kitchen. And the other one's going to be our um, manufacturing where we can make our own CBD infused sauces. Yes. Um, so it's wow. going to be best of both worlds. It's going to, you know, we're, we're, we're going to do culinary classes for chefs. We're going to do culinary classes for um, homeowners. Um, I've got some great partners. I wish I could tell you who they are right now, but I can't do we'll, that. We'll yet. keep that. Yeah, no problem. Yeah. Um, but, you know, a lot of people that I've worked with in the industry, as far as ovens are concerned and, and all of the things that go along with that have been very generous to come forward and say, hey, Glenn, we'll give you what you need. We want to be a part of it. We know what's going to happen. And, you know, like anything else, we're not going to be affiliated with any school. Um too much mad respect and love for Tony Gemignani. Uh, he's got the, his great school in San Francisco, yep. which I've attended. Yep. Yes. And um, so we're going to do it a little differently where uh, um, we will become um, uh, certified at some point, but it's really going to be a beautiful center. It's 7,000 square feet. Um, it's going to be a lot of fun. We're going to be able to generate a lot of content for not only Toss, Sauced, and Baked, which is the company, um, but for other people as well. And of course, I'm still doing um, uh, consulting. Consulting is starting sure, back up for sure. me. And I've actually got a project, uh, it, you know, that I'm going to be able to see you at. I'm looking forward to that when you come to Aloha Land. That'll be right? great. Yeah, That'll cool. be great. That'll be great. Yeah. Now, a little bit about the school. Is it going to be a cannabis infused school or is it just a general uh, culinary arts 
Yeah, you know, we think it's best um, to, to separate the two, but also combine them. So culinary cannabism tourism is massive. Uh, so there is absolutely a, um, uh, a market there for that. We've done our test marketing. We know that there's going to be a lot of people coming in for the allure of being able to learn how to cook with cannabis and things like that. But that's not going to be the main focus either. We're going to do conventional pizza um, schools. Uh, Chef Leo uh, Spaziri, who you know very well. I do. Great Billy guy. Manzo. Yeah. Um, another good uh, guy. Yeah. Another great guy. Um, you know, there's a lot of, a lot of guys, uh, uh, my, my surfing buddy who I've never surfed with, but I hope to it's someday, uh, Giuliano, yeah. um, those, those guys we're going to have out as guest chefs, like, um, like Mara Forney does at the Pina pizza university, sure. like Tony has people, you know, as well. Um, I hope to have Tony and Laura. Um, you know, I, I really want there, there's there's so many talented people in our industry. Derek Sanchez, uh, uh, Vincent Rotolo. I mean, Chris Decker. I, you know, it would take it would goes take on and on and on. Them. No, right. right. You're hitting and, all the buttons. And, yeah. And each one of them have their own skill sets, skill sets and talents. And, and I hope to have all of them at, at some point at the Culinary Center and teaching great classes. So it, it's really going to be diversified. OK, that sounds great. Well, Glenn, I'm looking forward to you coming to uh, Hawaii. I can't wait to see you here on Oahu. So and am I. You're going to be testing some pizzas for us, Albert. Uh, I'd right? love to. I'd right love on. to. Oh, man, that's one of my favorite things to do. That's right, mine too. Before that. What tips do you have for someone that wants to infuse Pacalolo or marijuana into their sauce, their pizza, whatever? Let me get that question first. Yeah. And then we'll get you know, to the it's, end. It's um, uh, research. Do your research. Um, I, I'm gonna, you know, I'm, I'm starting to build a little bit more of a, a of a um, uh, content on my websites, um, and it's it's all about research. Uh, you know, this is a very powerful medicine, so it is not um, it's not something that you know you want to take lightly. The nice sure. thing is, there's never been a confirmed death of THC or CBD overdose. Just doesn't yep. happen. Yeah. So. Um, uh, but responsibility is the key factor here. Um, you know, and, and, and everybody should be responsible. Uh, look on the internet, learn how to decarboxylate your own flour. Um, okay. These days you can go out and buy oils that are infused with CBD and THC sure. and things like that. But, um, I'll have a lot more content on the websites. Uh, you know, I've got, um, glensabolski.com, um, and I've got tossed sauced baked.com. And um, I'll send you those so you can maybe put them in your in in as footnotes. And, yeah, well, um, that'd be great. That'd be great. And anybody can contact me anytime. You know, I, I like to help people. It's not always about you know being paid fees and things like that for cult consulting. Uh, sometimes I'll just answer some questions. Sure. Um, sure. That's the community we live in. But also, yeah. you know, uh, I'm doing a really big project up on Whidbey Island up in uh, Washington for a phenomenal guy. Um, and, and his partner and, and, um, you know, there's one thing I've learned over all these years, Albert, and you know, um, and, and everybody knows that I've closed restaurants. Um, anybody in this industry that, that, that hasn't, and has been in this industry for 20 years is lying yes. uh, unless they only have one. Sure. So we all make mistakes and we all have to learn from those mistakes. What do we know that's going to make it better next time? And, uh, you know, there's a lot of things I don't know. But if your restaurant is losing money, I know why it's losing money. Sure. All I have to do is take a look at it. So if there's anybody I can help out there, that's great. That's what I do as well. Um, and uh, they could reach me also at on, on either website or at uh, chef at glensabolski.com or chef at tossed sauced perfect. Com. All right. I'll put those links below this video. I'll and, send them uh, to you. That's awesome. Hey, Robert. thanks. Thank you so much for uh, hanging out with me. And I look forward to seeing you here in Hawaii. What a gas, man. Albert, you know, you've always been, a, a um, you know, I, 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 since I, I met you and we really don't know each other that well because right. Pizza Expo, it's, it's so hectic. But yeah. um, you're one of the most prolific uh, uh, people in pizza because you absolutely love it. So thank you for being so passionate about okay. it. And, and I'll see you soon, my friend. Okay. Thank you. Thank you so much. 
Yeah. See you later, bud. Okay. Bye.